Welcome to Decoded by Christina, a series where each video will focus on one HTML or CSS concept. Today, I'm going to talk about how to improve your projects by refactoring your code. Let's get started. Refactoring is the process of rewriting and restructuring the code to improve the design of the code base. This practice can be applied to any language, but this video will focus on HTML and CSS. When refactoring, here are some goals to keep in mind. Rewrite to reduce complexity. It's easy to fall into the trap of over-engineering, especially when you've just learned a cool new trick. But try to keep in mind to only add what you need. Make it reusable. Being able to reuse snippets of code means less code overall and more consistency. Think about how you can make it flexible. This can help to make it easier to reuse and extend features by adding onto existing code snippets. Make the code easy to read. Use white space, indentation, and comments for organization. Show your intent by using descriptive class names and comments. Write your code as if you're writing it for someone else to understand. And in some cases, you probably are. And even if you're only writing it for yourself, it's not unusual to come back to a project months later and feel like you have to re-familiarize yourself with code base again. Let's take a look at some ways we can refactor HTML and CSS. Something that happens often when adding content and styles to our web projects is we inadvertently end up using too much HTML markup. The div element is often used to group or wrap elements to add CSS to them. But it's not always necessary to throw a div or another container element around another element that needs to be styled because every HTML element is its own box and can be styled. In this example, the style looks the same whether you add it to the h1 element or its container element. But you can and should use a div and other container elements like header when multiple elements need to be grouped. Just remember to only add what you need and use semantic HTML tags instead of divs when it makes sense to do so. In this example, I've removed the extra div and added the logo class right to the header tag since it's being used to group together the logo and the h1. When it comes to CSS, I find that organizing your code from the beginning can help reduce the amount of refactoring needed later. I like to use comments for grouping related CSS styles into sections or modules. This can help reduce the chances of writing duplicate or extra code. You can use whatever characters you'd like in your comment as long as they're enclosed within the asterisk. I prefer to add dashes underneath the text to visually block out these sections. Then I'll use the same comment style to organize other groupings of related styles for the specific portions of the web page. I always start with the base CSS, which are styles that are applied globally or shared, then add more specific styles as needed. When I say global and shared CSS, I'm referring to the styles that are applied to all or most of the elements on the page, such as the font family, colors, and font sizes. These styles are applied to the basic type selectors, such as body, headings, and links. Then get more specific as needed by applying styles using classes. Even then, start with the more generic class styles like page wrappers and page layouts. As the project progresses, CSS styles can be added into related groupings such as the header and footer or specific page content to keep things organized and easy to find. You can only plan so much in advance, but starting off with some organizational rules will help to write more thoughtful CSS. If you find that you're declaring the same styles over and over again, this is a good indicator that you could probably do some refactoring. Let's go over a couple ways to make repetitive code more efficient. Combine selectors to target multiple elements at the same time. You can still use separate declaration blocks for the styles that are specific and not shared, but everything else can be combined. It'll be easier to make updates and will reduce the amount of code. Creating reusable classes will also reduce repetitive code. Instead of writing the same style for each element with a different selector, add the shared class to the element itself. Most styles can be inherited from the parent element. If there are styles that are common for most of the page elements, it's better to add the CSS to a parent selector rather than declaring the same style over and over again to each element. Let the CSS do the work for you. Override it when necessary with a more specific selector. For example, Set the font family using the body selector to apply it to all the elements on the page, such as paragraphs, headings, and links. But if you want specific styles for the headings, then override just what you need using the specific heading selector. Another thing to look out for when refactoring CSS is to reduce specificity issues, such as over-qualifying selectors. This refers to using selectors that are more specific than it needs to be. In this example, the selector indicates that it's a style for an image element with a class of thumbnail. 
Even if you only plan to use this class with an image tag, you can just use the class as the selector rather than add the second requirement of it being an image tag as well. That way, if you realize that you need to add a container around it, you can use the class in either element. Or these styles can be reused with other elements if needed. Maybe you have several thumbnail styles that are applied to different elements and you want to differentiate between them. Instead of overqualifying the selectors, just use more descriptive class names such as thumbnail image and thumbnail container. Another way to reduce specificity is to use more efficient selectors. For example, when selecting nested elements, you don't have to select the whole family tree. You can skip a level or two. Take a moment to determine how specific you need it to be. Do you need to select links in a submenu contained in the nav? or only links in a submenu that specifically uses an ordered list, or maybe just all the links in any submenu. Pick the most generic option. The browser has to cycle through each selector to process it, so using the least amount of selectors as possible will also help with efficiency. You can always make it more specific later if needed. It takes time and experience to learn how to write more efficient code. So whether you're taking some time to refactor your code or starting a new project, keep these tips in mind and getting into the habit of constantly refactoring as you go along can make it less daunting, rather than waiting until the end. That wraps up this edition of Decoded by Christina. Until next time, bye!